Good morning, everyone. Hello to another Idea Statica webinar. It's still in the it's still morning in the Central Europe, but for some of you, it may already be afternoon. So good afternoon for you. Uh, we welcome especially uh, engineers who uh, focus on concrete structures today, because today's topic is going to be Bauman's method that is used uh, for evaluation of design forces of concrete shells. Uh, my name is Jana Kaderova. I'm a product engineer, uh, but next to me there's Lukas Juricek, who's the main uh, person to uh, lead you through the today's topic. So, hello, Lukas. How are you? Hello, Yanni. I feel really great. Thank you and welcome on the webinar. Thank you. And uh, before we start, please know that uh, you are muted by default, uh, but you can always ask the questions uh, via the questions panel in GoToWebinar. Uh, if you don't see the panel, please uh, open it uh, from the grab tab from the orange arrow. So that's it for the practical stuff. And let's take a look at the, today's content itself. Uh, we will start with a short introduction of what it is, the Bauman's method. Uh, after that, Lukash will speak about the reinforcement and detailing of orthogonal and skew slabs of concrete. And after that, we will see two practical examples in Ideastatica RCS. Uh, the first one is the orthogonal slab and the second one, the skew slab. And we will finish with a short summary and other uh, related content. Before we really start, let me ask you the first question of today's. What type of monolithic structures do you design the most? Uh, I will start the poll and please uh, let us know. So I can see uh, that uh, your answers are popping up. I will give you few more seconds. It can be either bridges, multi-story buildings, slabs or masonry structures, or if you do not design any of these, but you are only interested in the topic, please select the last option. Okay, let's give you five more seconds. Great, and I will close the poll and show you the results. So the winner is uh, the multi-story buildings option. And uh, also a lot of you came to find out something about this topic that may be, may be new for you. But we have also people from uh, bridges and slabs for masonry structures. So great audience and uh, now I'm uh, hiding the results and uh, I'm passing the presenter to Lukash and he will start with the topic itself. Yeah. Thank you, Annie, for a word. Yeah, mm -hmm. I will share the presentation. Uh, hope that uh, you can see my screen. Uh, it's the first slide interaction of the Bauman's method. Can you Annie, confirm that you can see that? Yeah, we can see it and we can hear you well. Okay, perfect, perfect. So, uh, welcome on the webinar uh, that will be dedicated to uh, Bauman's method. So, let's go into the problematic at first. Um, some introduction, which is very important from my perspective, because uh, why we are like doing or using uh, Bauman's method in the uh, code check of the structures for for concrete slabs. So uh, the Bauman methods uh, is used for determination of the design internal forces and is used for the code check of the reinforcement and concrete generated composites. I will I will just take a take a laser to show you uh, how it works um, in a general. So uh, you are receiving um, 
the shell internal forces or slap internal forces like normal forces and the bending moments, torsion moments on the slabs. And uh, the goal of the method or the concept is based on the decomposition of uh, the shell's internal forces into the layer of the reinforcements that can be that can be seen here, and also the, to the layers uh, of the of the concrete. So the bending moments can be decoupled to the two forces. Uh, with a different convention. You can see one is a tension, one is a compression. And the membrane forces that are acting in the middle of the of the shells, uh, you can redistribute to the two same forces in the top and the bottom layer. Uh, if you later on um, sum it up together, so you will receive this redistribution of the normal forces by the surfaces, by the top and the bottom, bottom surfaces. Uh, maybe you as a part of it, Part of you are bridge engineers, uh, so uh, you know the sandwich model, which is com uh, which is coming from the Aerocode 1992 in the Annex LL. So uh, this method is using the formulation of the Bowman's methods inside. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is this charter is uh, very important because right now uh, you can see uh, what are the steps for determination of the design normal forces and design bending bending moments. So uh, in the first step, uh, you're receiving the internal forces from uh, from the finite element solution. So you have uh, eight internal forces or uh, for shells, five internal uh, forces for, for slabs, for example. So uh, in the first step, you are calculated of uh, or you're calculating a normal forces at the both surfaces of the 2D elements to the top and the surface. So you need to decomposite it. Uh, in the next step, it's very important to calculate the principal stresses or the principal forces, principal bending moments and principal normal forces uh, for for top and the bottom surface of the 2D of the 2D elements. In the next and upcoming step, uh, there is the Baumann's transformation equation uh, that is uh, that is used for uh, like transformation of the forces to the relevant and user-defined angle. Based on the user-defined angle, we are searching or seeking the the maximal and the critical cut on the on the plate uh, for evaluation uh, of the utilization. Uh, in the next step, if you have the forces decomposed to the top and the sur uh, and the bottom surface, uh, you need to like convert it to the middle or to the center of the gravity of the shell. So the next step is logical from the point of view that you're recalculating the forces from the top and the surface part, uh, from the top and the bottom surface part into the center of the gravity of the 2D element. So you are receiving the normal force and the bending moment. And the last step, uh, it's not the goal of this webinar, but in the same approach, uh, uh, the attitude is to um, is to code check the shear forces because you know they're will appear some shear forces, but the approach is the same as for uh, the normal force and the bending moments that you were rotating the uh, norm, the uh, shear forces to find the most critical um, effect of the shear force. Design forces and the user-defined angle, what does it mean? So um, as a Baumann's method, uh, the default, the Default settings or um, default concept of Baumann's methods is to have uh, four angles. I will take uh, I will take a laser again. So uh, if you have the reinforcement or element, concrete element or composite element, so uh, you will have these four angles which are like phasely shifted about a 45 degree. So you can see the first angle is in the zero degree. Uh, after, if I use the phase shift about 45 degree, so I'm receiving, let's call it membrane compression strut, which uh, will appear on top or the bottom uh, surface of the, of the concrete element. The next angle in the 90 degree is going to the reinforcement or is the composite reinforcement. And like perpendicular angle to the 45 degree is a 135 degree. Uh, these are these two angles, 45 degree and the 135 degree. These are the angles which are representing so-called uh, the direction of the membrane compression strut. So I will explain it later, but it's very important to know that there can appear uh, some compression, some compression uh, or some angles that uh, will cause, let's say, the 
compression compression behavior in the bottom strip of the um, uh, of the of the element. So uh, the next step, as uh, you as a user, you should you should rotate this angle based on the, on some increment to receive the maximal utilization uh, in in the cut in the cut or on the shell. So uh, I will use the increment of the 10 degree because we'll be rotating or spinning around uh, these angles from zero degree to 90 degree, and the increment will be let's say 10 10 10 degree to catch the uh, maximum utilization um, based on the relevant rotation. Reinforcement area reduction. This is very important to, to understand and imagine that you can see right now I have a two cases. In the first case, there is a cut in the zero degree. So you have a perpendicular or orthogonally reinforced uh, reinforcement slab or shell whatever you want. Uh, so if you perform the cut here, so you can see I have five five rebars in the top and in the bottom, in the bottom cord or in the bottom part of the uh, of the cut. But let's say if you if I as a user cut the element um, uh, under the angle 45 degree. So you can see the distances between the reinforcement are take the laser the distances between the reinforcement are different and also if you cut it like this so you will you will see the reduction of the reinforcement area inside it means like a total area of the reinforcement inside the section it's nicely visible from uh, from these sections so this distance is one meter and you can see the amount of the reinforcement for cut 45 degree is completely different than for the cut in the zero degree. So this is very important to understand uh, this behavior and how the area is changing uh, based on the user defined angle or on the rotation. So you can see that uh, the function uh, that is used is uh, cosinus square alpha. So uh, by the 45 degree, I can expect, let's say, uh, half half amount of the reinforcement inside, inside the section. Uh, if you'll be focusing on the distance between the rebars, so for direction zero, you have a standard spacing. So it's, let's say, 100 millimeters or 200 millimeters. But uh, the distance is changing by the uh, cosinus, cosinus alpha. So uh, on the horizontal axis, you can see the angle of the rotation. And by the 90 degrees, so uh, I'm going to the infinite side uh, or to the infinite distance of the uh, reinforcement in um, to the sorry to the infinite uh, distance between the reinforcement rebars. It means I will have nothing inside inside the section. So that's very important to understand how how it works because this is implemented in the idea static RCS. These assumptions and this is valid with uh, and um, comply with the. Bauman's theory, which is which is behind. Okay, so I think it was enough uh, dedicating to the uh, theory, and right now we can jump into uh, do, to the orthogonal slabs. Uh, what are the uh, the essential of the reinforcement inside and how it behaves? What is the detailing? Because this is the first step, which is very important to know uh, before we start, like inserting the reinforcement and calculating the uh, shell, shell elements in the Idea Statica RCS. So orthogonal slabs, uh, what we can say that, uh, I will take this, again the laser. So here uh, you can see some part of the element or some cutout from the structure where I have a concrete and um, orthogonal reinforcement of this, of this uh, element is, is ensured here. So uh, for orthogonal slabs, we consider that uh, the reinforcement will align the edges of the slab. So it means uh, generally the reinforcement layout uh, correlate with the uh, main principle principal moments. Because you know, if you have a reinforcement uh, which is aligned with the principal bending moments so you are getting the uh, maximum utilization of the of the rebars itself so um, 
generally these are some findings that the initiation of the cracks uh, is perpendicular to the direction of the principal moments if we are um, considering let's say the maximal bending moment uh, in the middle in the middle of the of the slab because I don't know if I mentioned that the boundary conditions are here and here and these are free edges yeah? so this is uh, the approach how the orthogonal slabs are currently reinforced and uh, what is also good to know um, that the principal bending the, the principal bending moments that that are seen here um, has generally the perpendicular direction or are aligned with the edges of uh, of the shell but if you are coming closer to the to the support you can see some effect of the torsional of the torsional moments so the torsional moments is affecting the direction so um, generally the um, uh, principal moments are starting to rotate so it's nicely visible here so uh, we can say that the torsional moments are negligible in the middle in the middle of the of the plate or slab uh, but uh, it's like being have a uh some some impact in the vicinity of the of the support area this uh type or this reinforcement layout is uh, currently used for residential and administrative buildings and also for orthogonal bridges for orthogonal bridges uh, there is also some re uh, reinforcement um, in the form of the shear reinforcement because you know the the depth or uh, yeah the high of the of the plate or slab is is uh not 200 millimeters but let's say 700 millimeters if we can say because it's a bridge bridge uh bridge deck <clears throat> okay so uh right now we can move on to the first example that will be uh that will be orthogonally reinforced uh, bridge slab and uh, this is my model so this is my plate uh, for the purpose of the demonstration and introduction how the Baumann's method works so we have only uh, one uh, load case that you can imagine as a combination for ultimate limit state and um, the plate is is like loaded with the uniform pressure uniform pressure and uh, here here are the uh, line hinges, which are uh, fixed line hinge, uh, and here on the on the right side there is some uh, sliding hinge. So uh, you will get uh, the bending moments, as you know from the from the beam theory. Uh, all the forces that are coming from from the calculation are respecting the local coordinate system. So uh, what I can say that this is my x direction, and the bending moments is uh, really low. It's 11. 0.1 kilonewton meter per meter but if you check the uh, bending moments in the second direction in the principal direction so you are getting 176.2 kilonewton meter per meter and what was mentioning in the previous slide that the uh, torsional moments are uh, approximately zero and it's true uh, based on the FEA analysis because we are taking out the element in the middle of the plate and also the angle of the principal forces or principal moments is aligned with the with the edges of uh, of the bridge so this is some first assumptions what we have and right now we can jump into idiastic rcs and uh, i would like to show you how uh, how easily it is to put the internal forces and run the run the code check so let's let's go to idea static rcs Maybe some of you are using Ideastic RCS for a uh, code check of the 1D elements. So right now I will move on uh, to the concrete card and here is the RCS. RCS is the application for reinforced uh, cross-section code check. I will create, I can open or create a new project. So in the this stage I will um, I will start with the creating a new project and you can see I can select error code and the national annexes so we support nine national annexes and uh, I was mentioning that it's a 
it's a deck, it's a bridge deck uh, that will be orthogonally reinforced. So I will be using arrow code 1992 uh, slash two for for uh, bridge code check bridge design. And right now we are approaching to selection of the section type. Uh, we are interested in about the shells. So if you select the shells, so here are some uh, subtypes like uh, shell slab, shell wall, slab, wall, and deep, deep beam. Uh, we will be using a slab because there are uh, no membrane forces in uh, in my case. So we'll be using the uh, slab, slab element. Okay, so this is the first layout or how the application looks like. Um, you can see we have some uh, cutout from the structure that uh, one meter width. And what you as a user need to put uh, as a first input is uh, the cross section dimension from our case, if it's shell so or slab, it's only the thickness because the other dimensions are automatically implemented. So the thickness is 700, 700 millimeters. Uh, you can change the material properties because we are uh, in the bridges. So I will increase the strength of the concrete C35 slash 45. We are using parabolic rectangular diagram for code check in the ultimate limit state. And let's move to design member. In the design member, uh, this is very important tab for determination of the exposure classes, where as a default is set up the carbonation and chlorides uh, XC3, XD1, but I would have the XD3 because there is a, a big impact of the chlorides and uh, the type of the bridge, it's a road bridge. Yeah. Uh, internal forces. Right now we are approaching to the to the main domain of the of, of the webinar is how to put the internal forces and how uh, works with the um, user defined user defined angle to find the critical critical check. Um, I will describe a little bit this part. So in this part you are putting the combinations for ultimate limit state or service limit limit state. In our case I was mentioning that we will be staying uh, by the um, ultimate limit state combinations. So uh, because service orbital limit state uh, combinations will be putting in the same way and the approach uh, will be same. So we will start uh, very easily and I will put the uh, internal forces there. So you can see right now I will put there 11.1 kilonewton meter per meter in the X direction, uh, 176.2 kilonewton per meter in the uh, y direction and the torsional moment is zero, is zero point minus zero point three. So I will put it there. And yeah, because we are in the middle of the slab, so there are no um, uh, there are no uh, shear forces. Yeah. So right now we put the uh, like the basic internal forces. Uh, right now we are approaching to to the most important part and it's the rotation or user defined rotation uh, angle. You have uh, two options for ultimate limit state and service limit limit state. You can use a user direction or you can use a principal stress direction. Uh, so generally if you use the principal stress direction as the evaluation, so based on the forces, the software automatically calculate the uh, principal, principal directions and based on the principal directions, it will give you immediately the normal uh, the design forces and the design design moments. So these two forces, design normal force and design moments, are coming are coming into the code check uh, of the ultimate limit state right now because we have turned on. But we'll be using the user direction because we will see in the in the next chapters uh, that the direction is very important to to keep it and to spin around. As a default, how, how I mentioned, the Baumann's method and the RCS uh, have a four angles. The one angle is zero, 45, 90, and 135 degree. If I change the angle to 10, you can see I have the first angle uh, spent about, about the 10 degrees. So the first angle is 10, next angle is has a phase shifting 45 degrees, so I'm on the 55 and concrete strut is on, so it's yes. 
and uh, the next the, the next angle is 100 and 145 and we'll be spinning around the angle from the 0 to 90 degree so let's go on uh, to see what is happening in the form of the of the code check so right now we need to reinforce at first the section because it's very really, it's essential it's important without the reinforcement we are like calculating only the plain concrete and it's not it's not good right now uh so for reinforcement we have predefined for you some templates and uh the templates uh you can use the bottom surface so you can turn on this template you will set the concrete cover uh for the first use case i will be using the same reinforcement in the top and the uh, bottom bottom surface of the of the element but for us skew bridges i will show you the different reinforcement and different inclination yeah so the first cover is 50 is 50 millimeters the diameter will be 18 there will be five bars till one meter so it means the distance of the bars will be 200 millimeters is automatically recalculated and what is very important is the is the input type if you have a main so it means that uh, the direction or the rebar will be counted or will be considered to code check of the ultimate limit state if you use if you use only the distribution so uh, this reinforcement will be used only for code check of the detailing so it won't be taken into account to uh, to the calculation or code check of uh, like the it won't be a bearing bars yeah so we will keep it everything as a main so it's like recommended um, and the diameter is 18 there will be five bars in the second layer after 200 millimeters so right now you can see that i have specified the bottom layers that the rebars are after 200 millimeters in the one and the second direction and here you can see you can see the cuts uh, i will do it samely for um the top surface so you can see the software automatically remember um everything except the cover so i will put 50 millimeters right now i have a reinforcement on the top and the bottom surface and because it's a slab uh, it's a bridge slab so i will use some lengths so there will be the diameter will be eight 200 millimeters distances 50 millimeter cover from the top and the bottom and the bottom side yeah so we can see i have it and i have really nice reinforcement which is the same uh distances between the rebars the i can say the area of the rebars and everything what i've put so right now we can approach to calculation control you can see from the point of view of the calculation control so uh you can specify what code checks will be established so uh, capacity shear interaction stress limitation crack with detailing and the response um what is very important what is very important is that uh there is also the interaction of all internal forces that are there because this can be in very uh often times the most critical check from the point of view of the um ultimate limit state so right now i will unselect all and select only the response because we will be co-checking only the uh, ultimate limit state so let's go to the calculation uh, so right now you can see that here is the small icon with four angles so the first as a default angle is a zero so here uh, this is the angle zero and my internal forces which are coming into the calculation this is the angle 45 45 degree you can see it's approximately zero and the maximal angle is uh, highlighted by the yellow yellow arrow so this is my maximal utilization for default settings zero zero degree so i have a utilization 52.9 percent and the next angle is 135 and you can see the forces are really low so uh 45 and 135 angle is approximately zero because we are in the direction of the principal principal uh forces or principal bending moments so this is the approach what we are using right now and this is like a if you use a default setting and i would like to show you what will happen if you use the default setting and you don't spin around the uh, the angle so right now i hope you will see my screen again and uh, 
yeah this is my orthogonal reinforcement and design forces but the design forces i have represented the design forces based on the uh, user defined angle so on the vertical axis you can see the design moments on the horizontal axis there is user defined angle so uh, med1 is the moment in the mx direction med2 uh, MED2 is the moment in the Y direction. So you can see the first moment in the zero, in the default setting zero, has 11.1 kilonewton meter. And here is the trend, how it's changing if you if you are changing the angle, the angle, the user-defined angle. Also, uh, like symmetrically, MED2, if you rotate around, around this point, so you were the MED4, MED2 is decreasing and you can see here is the plane of the symmetry so it's by the angle 45 degree but um instead of instead of uh, design moments there are only the design forces the normal forces in the section so the maximal force is in the in the angle 45 45 degree so you need to keep the eye on that uh because right now is coming the utilization and the critical critical angle so uh, for this orthogonal slab, uh, I will describe a little bit this graph. So on the vertical axis, there is a utilization for ultimate limit state and uh, utilization of the, of the rebars are like the maximum utilization of the rebars and the concrete. And on the horizontal axis, there is a user defined angle, which I was showing you in the RCS that the default was angle, uh, the default was zero and I was spinning around uh, with the increment of the 10, 10 degrees. Uh, my utilization zero, it means this is the utilization for the moment MED1, utilization 45 is the utilization for my moment MED, uh, yeah, MED3. Uh, and utilization 90 degrees, it's, it's this, yeah. So it's for my bending moment MED2 and 135. So I have a four curves where I can see that the maximum utilization uh, will appear by the uh, user-defined angle 20 or 70 degrees because you can see we have the symmetry here. Uh, if you use the default angle zero, so the difference is uh, between between the results are approximately from 10 till 15 till 15 percent. We have also the verification on that. So uh, that's very important to to know that uh, the user defined angle zero as a default uh, don't have to be enough for for the for all the analysis. So you should you should check uh, the more relevant relevant angles to capture uh, the maximal effect of the utilization. So it was for the orthogonal slab and the code check based on the uh, based on the Baumann's theory, which is implemented in the RCS. Right now we are approaching to the skew slabs. This is let's say a more interesting topic from the point of view of what is happening in the uh, in the skew elements or on the skew on the skew bridges. At first, I would like to mention that we can um, we can split uh, or divide the uh, skew slabs uh, based on the on the width or based on the skewness so in the first in or at first i will be talking about the narrow skew slabs and the principle of the detailing and how the uh, the stresses are are floating in the in the slab so how do you recognize that it's a narrow skew slab uh, if the ratio between the width and the high, uh, or sorry, width and the length of the bridge is uh, lower than 33%. Yeah, 33%. Uh, right now we can focus on the principal tensile moments M1. These are the principal moments in the bottom surface of, of, of the slab. And principal moments M2, these are the principal tensile moments uh, in the the top surface so uh, these are the moments where we let's say should put another reinforcement to capture all the tensions which can it can happen there so uh based on that uh, you can see some two types of the reinforcement that can be used for narrow skew slabs so um 
the main reinforcement is aligned with the free edge of the slab, but the obtuse corner of the slab is reinforced on the negative uh, principle and two moments, uh, and we can use, let's say, the fan-shaped bars or the bars which are aligned in the uh, with the edge of the boundary conditions to uh, to increase the the, the stiffness and uh, also the uh, bearing capacity of of the element at at this at these parts. So these are some these are some principles or de detailings that are currently used in the in the practice, and uh, let's say we should we should follow them. Um, the next the next case is the case uh, that I would like to show you in the application idea uh, Ideastica RCS and uh, yeah sh sh show you generally the benefits and the imperfections of this reinforcement because uh, what we know that this model of reinforcement is mainly used in the practice due to simplicity of the assembling on the construction side because you know it's it's aligning the edges so uh, uh, the guys on the on the construction uh, on the construction side uh, working very quickly and uh, yeah it's a smooth smooth way how to how to do that uh, but what is very important to understand from the point of view of the physics behind that uh, the bending not the bending but the principal moments uh, are starting to change and uh, we should generally from the point of view of the physics, we should keep the reinforcement in the direction of the principal principal moments to capture the maximal utilization of the reinforcement and also some some um, to predict to predict and uh, uh, capture um, generate the maximal cracks initiation. Yeah. Um, what is very important that uh, from the point of view of the detailing, the reinforcement angle is aligned with the edges. The free edges of the slabs uh, are reinforced using the additional stirrups because here on the edges can appear something which is called like a hidden hidden beam. And yeah, the obtuse corner that, that are that are here uh, should be reinforced with the additional reinforcement to capture the negative moment M M1. Uh, right now, oh, I have uh, the last, the last uh, detailing or uh, the practical way uh, how to reinforce this wide skew slab, but not with a small skewness, but a big skewness. So generally, the uh, ratio between the uh, width and the length of the bridge is uh, higher than 33%, but also uh, the angle, which is here, the angle. Uh, here is lower than 60 degree. It means that the skewness that is like measured from from this point is uh, starting to be higher and higher. So there are some other uh, reinforcement rule or reinforcement detailing which should be which should be captured and are used in the practice uh, in in the practice. So uh, ideal direction of the reinforcement layout like is aligning the direction of the moments. So we can say that in the middle of the of the slab, it works. It works really well. Uh, but uh, if we are like proceeding or yeah, proceeding to to the boundary conditions, uh, there is a big effect of the torsional torsional moments that like inclining or deviate the uh, the direction of the principal uh, principal moments from the real reinforcement that is that is inside inside the slab so it means uh, we can expect uh, if we do not put an additional reinforcement we can expect a big crack there uh, but for structure detailing reasons it's very difficult to comply with the criteria of placing the reinforcement uh, in the direction of the principal moments so uh, yeah it's very hard for the guys on the construction side Let's jump in to the last example that will be dedicating to wide skew slab uh, with the small skewness because these are, uh, from our perspective, the bridges that are used the most and the reinforcement is uh, uh, in the practice. So this is my model, my reinforcement layout. And these are how the reinforcement layout looks like. 
So uh, the main rebars are aligning the uh, left and right free edge. Here are the boundary conditions, which are like a line hinges. Uh, and also the transverse uh, reinforcement is aligning the top and the bottom edge. So these are the edges of the uh, boundary conditions. All the internal forces, as you can see, so the this is the element, finite element, and this is my local coordinate, uh, coordinate axis. So the internal forces are extracted in this uh, local coordinate systems, and you can see it here. So I have a moment in the x direction, so it's this direction, m y, and you can see the big portion of the torsional moments m x y. So I'm I'm speaking about the element in the middle, in the middle uh, of the of the bridge, which is based on the low or which is e extracted. Um, on the local coordinate system. So this is my element, and this is my uh, my my angle. So let's jump into Idea Statica RCS to show you how you will reinforce it and how it affects the critical check of uh, of this slab. Okay, so let me let me start uh, let me start from the beginning. So I will create a new project that will be also uh, it will be a bridge slab. I will use this section type, which is 2D section, and the member type will be slab. Right now, in the first in the first uh, as a first input, I will use uh, the thickness. Thickness will be 700 millimeters. The concrete C35/45. The design member. We are approaching to design member and the exposure class definition. So the XD3 chlorides are enough, um, and we are approaching to internal forces inserting. What internal forces will be used? So we'll be uh, keeping the, the local coordinate system of the of, of the shell or the, play, uh, the slab. So 43.5 kilonewton meter per meter. Uh, MY will be 152.5 kilonewton meter per meter. And the torsional moments MXY is minus 68.6 kilonewton meter per meter. So uh, right now you can see in the in the angle zero degree. So we are getting for every angle some normal force, some design normal force, and design bending bending moments. If I go to the calculation control, unselect all, and just uh, retain the response and M because because of ultimate limit states uh, code check, and go to the go to the results. So yeah, I forgot. To put the reinforcement, so it's my bad. Uh, so I will come back to reinforcement and put the layout uh, where it will be inclined inclined bars. So in the first step, you will jump to the reinforcement. You will be starting with the reinforcement of the bottom layer. So the cover is 50 millimeters. And the first diameter is 20. There will be five bars in layer after 200 millimeter distances. The second diameter is sorry, not 18, but a 20 also because it's a bottom bottom surface. Um, five bars and the distance is, is 200 millimeters. So right now um, I will just I would like to rotate my reinforcement about the about the 30 degree, yeah, because it's inclined. So the first reinforcement will be 90 degree and the second reinforcement will be 30 degree. Uh, this is the local coordinate system. So if you rotate it, so you will you will get the same uh, reinforcement that can be that is visible here. Yeah, because we are putting uh, internal forces to the local coordinate system, and this is how the reinforcement looks like. In the same way, we will be putting the reinforcement to the top surface, but the reinforcement diameter will be different. 
So I will use the uh, diameter 12, but the cover will be 50 millimeters. The diameter will be 12, five bars in layer. After 200 millimeters, the second diameter will be also uh, 12. And yeah, I can put it there. And right now I will just switch the switch the angles. Yeah, the angle, the first one will be 90 degree and the second one will be 30 degree. So right now I have a top and the bottom surface reinforced in this in the same same way, and we can approach to 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 the results. So let's go to the results. So in the results, in the first angle, you can see there is a utilization of the 30 of the 35 35%. The critical angle, critical angle is in the angle of the compression membrane strut. It's in the bottom, it's in the bottom part, and it's 61.2% utilization. Uh, in the angle 90, we have a 41. As, and in the 135 angle, we have a 55% of the utilization. So the critical angle is has a yellow color, and you can see it's a 61.2% of the utilization. So right now, uh, let's go to the presentation to show you uh, how I spin around the angle and what is the critical angle, because for the skew bridges, it's very important to spin around the angle to find the critical angle and the critical combination of the normal force and the bending moments, design mom normal force and design bending moments. So right now, this is my reinforcement layout and what what can be seen here? So on the vertical axis is again, design moments and on the, uh, on the horizontal axis is user defined angle. So, as been uh, previously explained, uh, the differences between the moments MED1, MED2, MED3. So you can see the trend, uh, the trend of uh, the bending moments, how it's changing based on the based on the angle. So MED1 and MED2 are shifted about the 90 degrees. So there, uh, the angles have to receive some some plane of the symmetry that is uh, by the by the angle approximately 70. 70 degree and for a moment MED3 and MED3 uh, shifted about the 90 degree, it's the critical angle or the, the plane of the symmetry, not the critical angle, but the plane of the symmetry approximately 25, 25 degree. So if you uh, take into account the normal force, the trend of the normal force based oh, based on the, on the angle, so uh, you can expect think that the critical angle or the critical utilization will be somewhere between the 60 and the 70, 70 degree. So let's go to to the code check. Right now, uh, where is the critical angle uh, where we need to spin around to, to get this critical utilization? The critical design angle occurs at the user-defined angle of the 60 degree, which can be seen here. And we are getting the utilization 96, 96%. So this is my user defined angle. Oh sorry. And this is this is uh the perpendicular angle shifted above the 90 degrees. So the critical generally direction is 150 degree. I will explain a little bit uh, more in detail uh in the application RCS. But you as a user are specifying the user defined angle 60 degree, and based on the user defined angle, there are four upcoming angles that are code checked based on the user defined angle. So uh and the critical direction is a is a direction of the compression membrane membrane strut. And what is very important to see that this is the element of the concrete. Uh, this is uh, the reinforcement that is inside. So generally, the bearing capacity of uh, the element is highly reduced in this direction because you can see we are like cutting the reinforcement under some. Uh, some direction, so the reduction of the area is is, is really is, is a major. Yeah? So uh, I will show you what we get, how many reinforcement we get in the inside of the section uh, for this cut. So I will set up the 60 degrees, come back to here, 
output 60 degree. Right now you can see I have the forces, the design forces, which are here, has been recalculated into the four upcoming angles. And my critical angle I was mentioning was 150 degree. Let's go to the results. In the results, this is my user-defined angle, 60 degrees. So I have a utilization 23%. Uh, but the maximal utilization is by the angle 150 degree. And you can see this is my uh, like compression area or area uh, where the concrete is under compression. And you can see how many reinforcement is inside the section. So it's, it's, it's minor. So there is, there is not five bars, but because of the cut, we have only one, two, three, four bars in the complete section. So uh, it's very, this is the reason why the code check is so high or the utilization, the utilization is so high, it's approximately 96.3%. So uh, what is very important right now to take away from this, from this part is that for skew bridges, if you don't spin around the angle and you will stay by um, the default angle, so you can you can get the error about the thirty percent. So uh, please uh, keep it in your mind that the rotation or spinning around of the angle is is very important. And yeah, that's it. That's it from from my side. Uh, it was more uh, more working in the presentation than in the application Ideastic RCS. But from my perspective, it should be. Uh, like explanatory, uh, how the method works, uh, what is behind, and generally the usage of the application is very simple because it's a very good application for for uh, for users. So I would like to pass the word uh, to my colleague Yana to Thank show you. Thank you, Akash. Yeah, I've already taken the presenter. Thank you very much. Uh, let me sum this up. Uh, so I will read the main outcomes of Lukas' presentation. And that is that the, the correct angle settings for calculation of the design forces uh, is influenced by the magnitude of the torsional moments and also by the directions of reinforcement layout. Uh, for orthogonal shells with the same reinforcement area at the top and the bottom surface, the most critical code check in many cases is for the default zero uh, degrees angle, which is the basic default settings. Uh, if the reinforcement area differ, uh, meaning the top and the bottom layers, please use the RCS to find out the critical angle. And for the skew slabs, it is necessary to change this user-defined angle because uh, the neglecting of rotation can lead to major cracks and underestimation of critical checks. We have a very nice article about this uh, topic. Some of you have already asked for it. Uh, so please go to our resource center and find out the article called Structural Design of 2D Concrete Members. Let me show you what's inside. Uh, so this article uh, describes very well how to set everything in the application as well as it presents the main outcomes. So for example, uh, this diagram shows the dependence of the capacity of the slab on the direction of check for different reinforcement angles. And also in this article, you can find uh, some uh, main comparison to uh, other finite element tools and so on. The resource center is full of other documentation, so please feel free to uh, visit it. And now it's time for uh, the second poll. So please let us know, how do you code check your concrete slabs? I will launch it and please uh, check uh, option A, if you use finite element tool with a special add-on or you stick with uh, Excel spreadsheets for it, it's option B. Option C is uh, 
when you use our tools by Ideasotica, or if you use something else, please mark it as D. And also you can let us know in the chatter what kind of applications, the other ones or methods do you use. Again, I can see that most of you have already voted, but let's wait a few more seconds before we close it. Okay, so five more seconds, please. And I'm closing the poll and I will show you the results. Most of you use uh, some other, other method with uh, a special, for example, finite element tool uh, with a special add-on or you use Excel spreadsheets. So uh, I'm very surprised that uh, Ideasotica ended up on the last place, but maybe after this webinar, you can uh, maybe try uh, to use it as well. Okay, I'm hiding the poll and uh, now it's time for some of your questions. Uh, let me see. Uh, the most common question was on uh, the possibility to see the recording, which of course we will distribute after the webinar. So, uh, and another question, uh, can this approach be applicable on all kinds of slabs, even for building skewed slabs, Lukash? Uh, I'm sorry, can you please repeat, repeat the question? Uh, yeah. If the sorry. method can be used also for all kinds of slabs, even for building skewed slabs. Yeah, yeah, so uh, the method is general. So so generally, uh, if you receive the internal forces from your FEA solution, like uh, shell forces or slab forces, so you can put the forces to the RCS and do the code check. So it's it's like a general method for design for code check of the of the shells mm -hmm. okay and maybe one more question uh i wonder if the critical angle can be found uh, by the by the program automatically otherwise the software should be used with great care as might lead to unsafe results yeah that's that's a perfect that, that's a perfect question yeah i was uh i was thinking that the questions will be uh laid out here so uh right now the approach is that you should have uh, the manual incrementation of the angle to find the critical the, the critical angle. But uh, I shouldn't say that. But 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 right now uh, we are discussing about the implementation of uh, the automatic uh, finding of uh, the critical angle angle for um, easy approach of the of the user. Uh, so. We have it in the plan, but there is no specific date for that. Okay. Yeah, there are uh, many more questions, uh, but as we are running out of time, uh, don't worry, we will answer your question via email after the webinar. So uh, before we finish, uh, let me mention our educational platform. It's called Ideastatica Campus, and there are courses even for Ideastatica RCS and also for Ideastatica Detail if you are interested in concrete. If you want to learn something about our steel applications, there are three another courses on that as well. It's for free. You can find it on our web page or in your user portal. So please uh, try it out and uh, you can also get or be certified uh, as in the campus for uh, successfully finish it. Next webinars, uh, we will have one in March. Uh, that time it's on uh, connection, it's on steel, so our connection Wednesdays, and uh, we will take a look at the fire design. 
another concrete webinar is going to be in April. Uh, the topic is to be confirmed. And also in April, the end of April, you can look forward to the next version. So we will also have our release webinar for version 24.0. And the very last slide, uh, please let us know how you like the webinar. You can also send us some suggestions for the next webinars, the topics that you are interested in. The recording, as I mentioned, will be available uh, in about a day on our website or our YouTube channel. If you are interested in Ideastatica applications and you haven't tried it yet, you can apply for a 40-day 14 day trial. And if you already use the application and you want to learn more, go to our support center that is full of documentation, examples, tutorials, and so on. That's it. We are one minute longer, but I hope you enjoyed the webinar and thank you very much for your time and see you next time. Goodbye. See you. Bye bye.